Welcome to the Air Motor Project Virtual Machining 2020. So in this last segment, we're going to go ahead and manufacture the flywheel. Looking at the engineering drawing for the flywheel, it's made out of zinc, ZA8 zinc. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this, the zinc casting. It's actually a die casting. So it's got a little bit tighter tolerances and better surface finish than the sand castings do in this project. We're going to take that die casting and we're going to set up a transfer line with, with uh, machine tools. So instead of producing this one on CNC machine tools, we're gonna produce it 100% manually. When we look at the drawing, the tightest tolerance we have on this part is the center through hole that's gonna get press fit into the main shaft. So the 0.3115 plus zero minus five tenths is the, the tight tolerance we need to worry about. We're actually gonna go ahead and manufacture this first, this, this feature first, by simply reaming it on a drill press. The hole's already there from the die casting, and we're gonna use a reamer to open up the hole and achieve that tight tolerance and smooth surface finish. So operation number 10 is going to be just deburring the casting to make sure there's no flash on it left over from, from the, the die casting molds. And then after we deburr it, we're gonna hold it in a specialty fixture on it and use a drill press to ream that center hole to the right size. After that, we're going to transfer it down the line to a LeBlanc engine lathe where we, where we hold it in a special fixture and turn that outside diameter completely. So we're gonna turn that outside diameter to 2.65 plus or minus 10 thou. At that point, we're gonna go ahead and transfer it down to the next LeBlanc lathe where the, that lathe is set up to face at a certain length. So we're gonna hold it into a fixture and face it to 0.95 in, in, in thickness. After that, we're gonna go ahead and flip it around and transfer it to the next lathe down the line where we face it and we chamfer it to the final, the final width of 0.90. In operation number 10, we have a specialty fixture made to hold on to the, the flywheel. But first, we want to go ahead and use the hole deburring tool to deburr the hole and deburr any flash from the inside of the spoke so it can be positioned down in the fixture. Now, the fixture holds the part and it's, it's going to basically self-center the part. However, we have to go ahead and make sure that we align the reamer right down the middle hole when we first start. So you just line it up and then you slowly feed the reamer through the part, removing a small amount of material and giving us that 0.3115 hole uh, plus nothing minus five tenths. Now, we wanna go ahead and check the part with the go no-go gauge after this operation because we don't wanna go ahead and get produce operation 20, 30, and 40 and put more machine time into the part if the part is bad after this operation. So we double check it with the go no go gauge before we go on to operation number 20. Once the operation number 10 is finished, we move on to operation number 20. Now this routing, we have to go ahead and it's a standard routing. We have to go in the appropriate order and we transfer it down the line from machine tool to machine tool. So in operation number 20, we're gonna go ahead and turn the entire outside diameter of the flywheel up to its diameter of 2.65. That's gonna get rid of the draft that we have on the outside of the flywheel and make a nice shiny surface uh, on the outside, a nice shiny machine surface, as opposed to the dull matte die cast surface. Now, we're gonna use a specialty fixture to hold onto the flywheel through the spokes. So we have a pin in the fixture that locates the part concentrically through the center line datum, and then there's pins that go into the spokes that keep it from torquing on the fixture when we apply the cutting forces. So there's a face plate. Once we put the part onto the fixture, onto the studs, we have to go ahead and install the face plate and use the hex Allen wrench to tighten the bolts down, the, the screws, the machine screws down to the fixture. Once that's all set, we go ahead and we turn on the lathe. We set the feed rate to a larger chip load with, with this zinc. I usually like to run about an 8,000 inch per rev chip load in this operation. And we're gonna auto feed down the part, setting a 70 thou depth of cut for the first pass. Once it auto feeds down, we're then going to set the second one 
and it, they do a 30 thou finish pass. By having a large chip load and a slower speed on this part, we end up with a really nice surface finish on the zinc. If we get the zinc too hot by running too fast of a speed or an RPM, it'll go ahead and start to have a diminished effect on the outside surface finish. When we're all done machining, we go ahead and we take the part out of the fixture by unscrewing the machine screws, and then we have a gauge to double check that we've made the outside diameter within spec. So we have the maximum material condition and then the least material condition in that, in that limit gauge in order to determine that we've made that diameter correct. Once it passes the gauge test, we pass it down the line to operation number 30. In operation number 30, we're gonna transfer it down the line to the next LeBlanc lathe, and we're gonna use the same fixture we used in the previous operation. It's not the exact same one, but the same style fixture to hold the workpiece. So we go ahead and we place the, the part on the pins, and then we go ahead and put the faceplate on and tighten the machine screws to secure the part in the fixture. Now notice in this video, you're gonna see we have the, the casting marks from the ejector pins facing outwards. We wanna go ahead and have those ejector pins facing outwards so we can face them off. Then when we turn it around and locate it in the next operation, we don't go ahead and mislocate it on injector pins. What ejector pins are, is there pins in the die casting mold that pop the part automatically out of the mold when the mold opens? Because die casting is usually an automated casting process. So once those ejector pin marks are facing outwards and it's tight in the fixture, we go ahead and we turn on the lathe. Now, this operation, the carriage has been locked out to the correct length. So all we have to do is move the cross slide by using auto feed across the part in order to get it to face the part to the right length. So we turn on the lathe, we push the auto feed down, and we start facing the workpiece. Now, in this operation, as we come across right here, we're not done yet. We want to face the hub as well on this, on this operation. So once that hub is faced, we go ahead and we turn it around, and the chamfer tool should already be lined up for us. So what we're going to do is we just flip the tool from the facing tool to the chamfer tool. We line up the chamfer tool. We turn on the lathe and we touch the workpiece and, and then create the chamfer. At this point, we unfixture the workpiece from the lathe and we move on to the next operation. In operation number 40, we have the same style fixture that we've used in operation number 20 and 30. However, this time we're gonna go ahead and put the flywheel with the machine side towards the back of the fixture this time, the, since we eliminated the ejector pin marks in the last operation. And we're only gonna machine the rim this time. We're gonna leave the material for the hub so it, it can go ahead and ride on the air motor where it touches the frame and not have uh, a lot of surface to surface contact. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bolt the part into the fixture, tighten those machine screws. We're gonna turn on the lathe and the the carriage has already been set up at the right length to face this to length. So all we have to really do is auto feed the cross slide across the part facing the rim only. When we're done with the rim portion of it, we turn off the lathe, we back the tool up and we flip it around to the chamfer tool. At this point, we turn the lathe back on and we move the chamfer tool back up to the edge of the part and then make the same size chamfer that we made in, in the last operation, a 30 thou by 45 degree chamfer. When that's all done, we turn off the lathe, we, re, we take the part out of the fixture, and then we use the final thickness go-no-go -go gauge to check the part's length to make sure it's 0 0.90 plus or minus 10 thou. And that concludes the machining portion of the flywheel. Now the flywheel should move on to the first article inspection to verify all of the critical design dimensions have been met through our four manufacturing operations that we performed, 10, 20, 30, and 40.